Yeah, good day YouTubers. Tinker O'Tool again with another video. Today we're going to talk about lining your tool height up, carbide tip, high speed steel, so that it is cutting in the middle, the center line. So what we want to achieve, for those that are not too familiar, the beginners, we want our cutting tool to cut right through the center. So when we look at our bar stock, and our bar stock's in the lathe, we want to be cutting right through the center line. Okay, for the experienced machinists, they don't need to look any more at this video, uh, unless they want to laugh, that's okay. But for the beginner, you need to pay attention because you need to be turning on the centre line. And the other thing is, when we turn between centres, well, hopefully that's matched up as well. So this is all lined up. We can zoom in there and have a little bit of a look. Now, there it is there. Now, you might be able to see very clear, so what I'm going to do, I took a close-up picture of that, and we're going to put that up on the screen now, so we can have a look at that. So clearly, you can see by the picture that it's lined up within a couple of thou. A lot of times I like to keep the uh, tool post slightly by a thou higher, uh, just because in case I've got a little bit of flex in the tool. And, but look... Give or take a couple of thou, it's not going to be the end of the world there. So get it as close as you can. So that's that method on the the dead stock, uh, uh, on the yeah the dead uh, center I should say, on the uh, headstock. Now we'll go to the other opposite end. I've got a live center. Now I aligned my tail stock uh, a while ago and it was spot on. But if you are going to go by height, you should be going by this one. This is the most accurate. And this is one that's most important. So we'll go have a look at the other end and see how that comes up. So there we are lined up there. And if you have actually have a look, it looks like we're just slightly higher as we were a little bit the other end, but we're probably just a little bit slightly higher at this end. I'll actually take a close-up picture of that. And uh, we'll put that up on screen. So we'll, we'll display that now. We'll put that on uh, a lot closer. And uh, we'll see how that comes up. Yeah, so that's out by about 0.1 of a millimetre. So that's not too bad, 0.1 of a mil. So I wouldn't stress over that. Uh, the other thing is, uh, and that's only about, so 0.1 of a millimetre is uh, going to be around a couple of thou, so yeah. Now, that is one method, but you should always go uh, probably by the headstock rather than the tail stock if possible, because uh, the headstock is where you're going to do all your work. Unless you do compare like this and you find out that it's almost perfectly the same height. Look, it's pretty good because it's it's not that much out, right? So, yeah. So we need to put the chuck back on and we need to look at the next method that you can use to make sure that you've got the right height. Now, if we do measure... And we can do that. If we measure from this height to that height there, that is the height that we need to record. And you can either use a caliper to check or you can just machine off uh, a piece of bar stock, say half an inch or one inch in diameter, sit that on, on here and have it up to the height of the tool. So we'll actually measure the height. And I'll show you the tool that I created and what I use. So we'll show you another method after that we use to uh, check the height and maintain that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is use the depth gauge on the vernier. Sixty-five zero three. So that's the height that we need to maintain and we can sometimes it pays just to move this and try this a couple of times just to make sure you've got it right not the best uh vernier look a digital vernier sometimes isn't the best but it's reasonable see 65 
1.5. So you can get a little bit of variation, but long as you're close enough. We're not worried about a couple of thou here. So we're looking for 65.15. And I've got my little tool, which is this here. And if we measure it, 65.15, 65 65.26. 65 so... 6529 6521 so it's not too bad now if you put this up and run your finger along there or your fingernail then that's the height that you need to set all the time and once you've done this and you made this tool it's fine i just decided to make this adjustable you don't have to have it adjustable I just wanted it adjustable just in case I could, uh, I want to go lower than that or change it for some reason. It just gives me the option that it's adjustable, that's all. Okay, so the next simple procedure is using a steel ruler. We want to place a steel ruler between the workpiece and the tool bit. So in this case, we've got a bit of carbide. And we'll place a steel ruler in there and then just tighten up the the compound slide so that the carbide bit rests against the ruler holds the ruler and we need to go from the front and make sure that that's vertical okay so we're at the front we'll just zoom in there and you'll be able to see oh there we go now if it's leaning back a little bit that means that you're too low if it's leaning, so in other words, if it's leaning this, I'll just, I'll exaggerate this. So if it's leaning like that, it's too low. If it's leaning that way, it's too low. So again, we'll just place it there, tighten the slide up just so it touches. There it goes. It's looking pretty good. It's pretty vertical. As good as what you're going to get. Now, if you don't have any equipment whatsoever, that would be the most easiest way to check. And it generally gives you a pretty good result. Now, why is the tool height so important? It's important because you don't want to get chatter. You want to actually get a nice smooth finish. And most of all, when you're facing off, if you're using a carbide tip and your carbide tip is lower than the center line, I'll guarantee you, you'll snap it off. It'll create like a little nipple right in the center, right? And that means you're too far below. And if you go too high, you're going to end up with uh, problems as well. So the easiest way is doing it that way there, all right? And as I showed you before, because I've, I've made sure that the headstock and I've measured it at the headstock, the tail stock is out a little bit by a few thou, about at least five thou. There's a difference in height, about five thou difference. I'm not really worried about five thou over that entire length because I don't turn anything that's over about 400 millimetres. So I'm not worried about a few thou here or there. So, yeah, not worried about that. I think you could probably go to any lathe unless it was some special precision lathe uh, that yeah that's a different story if it's extremely high precision this is a 72 year old lathe don't expect it to be perfect that's all i'm saying get it reasonable if it's out ten thou it's up to you whether you want to re-shim the headstock is it worth it are you going to turn things that long yeah anyway there is a procedure that's uh i do have that procedure on this channel if you want to have a look at that headstock tail stock alignment so yeah, that is a simple way of making sure that your cutting tip, whether it's high speed steel, whether it's carbide, making sure that it's set at the correct height for good operation. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.